We pulled anchor at Staniel Key and prepared to take the cut over to the ocean side of the Exumas. We had never navigated any of the island cuts before and I was a little bit nervous. I had read several horror stories about strong currents and narrow passages. I spoke with several other boaters, at the bar of course, about which cuts were best and when the best time to cross was. Local knowledge is always best in these cases. We would have to do it four times on the way to Georgetown, so I was about to become one of those locals myself. At least Lynn and Jerry can get a little bit of fishing in along the way. Man, that was weird. And who's captain in the helm? I'm captain. I'm, I'm up there. I'm, I'm here to here. Look, I'll explain. I'm from the future, and I've come here to interrupt this video. Sorry, to let you guys know that Lynn and I are going to go to the Annapolis Boat Show on Friday the eighth and Saturday the tenth. We're going to be hanging out, checking out the boats, uh, going to maybe some seminars. We're going to go to the restaurants, hit the bar. So if you're going to the boat show, reach out to us. Talk to us on Instagram or Facebook or comment below or, hey, if you see us, say hi. But I have to get out of here, so I'll talk to you guys later. See you at the boat show. Well, Jerry, that's just great. Now he's got a time portal. One look in your eyes and I find it. When you leave in my mind, I rewind it. When you got it this good, you don't find This clip is a little long, but I wanted to show what it was really like to traverse the cut at Staniel Key. The passage is narrow, with shallow water on both sides, but it, it wasn't all that bad. We followed the advice of some of the fellow cruisers and picked a good window. You can tell from the video that we had some waves on the beam rocking us a bit, but we had been through much more challenging waters than this. Next up was Rudder's Cut. Now, Rudder Key is about halfway to Georgetown from Staniel Key. We wanted to spend the night there, so we had to take the cut, this time from east to west. They call that rock in front of us the whale for obvious reasons. The word is, you head right towards it until you are through the cut, then head to starboard for the anchorage at Rudder Key. It took us a while to find a nice sandy spot to set the anchor. The first spot was too shallow, the charts were wrong, but we eventually found a small spot with no rocks and set our hook there. We spent a quiet night at anchor since we knew we would be back in a few days to explore the caves and do some snorkeling. We pulled up the anchor in the morning. As you can see, sometimes it gives us a hard time coming through the pulpit. Hey. Uh, I had a lot of sand and growth on it. So I had a, and it wouldn't turn. So because it had so much uh, seaweed. Whenever we tie up on a fixed dock with exposed pilings, we never put the fenders out as they can get hung up. 
What we did not know was that this marina had removed the bumpers that cushioned the pilings, but left the mounting bolts, which extruded about three inches. We arrived at the exact wrong time. The tide was such that our rub rails oh were at the exact height of the extruded bolts. This caused significant fiberglass damage to the rails. I know viewers will wonder why I did not complain to the marina and try to get them to pay for the damage. Well, the marina is a mom and pop place that was mostly destroyed in a storm. In fact, we were the only transient there. In other words, there was no way they could or would take care of it. So we are in Georgetown, finally, after roughly 31 days and maybe 1,500 miles, we are finally here. Uh, we are staying at the Exuma Yacht Club, which is a marina that is currently being rebuilt. Uh, there's a couple of slips here, uh, not a lot, uh, and I, they're, they're obviously doing some work on it, but it's a, it's a perfect location. We're right outside Lake Victoria. Uh, we haven't been to town yet to explore, but I can tell you a couple of things. This is one of the most, probably the most beautiful entrances to a port that I've ever seen. The, the, the water is amazing. The islands are amazing. And, um, well, we're going to explore the town, but I'm just happy to be here. If you do get here sometime soon, though, be careful. These docks under, are under construction, and there were some bolts sticking out of the pilings. Put about five gouges in the uh, rub rail on the side of my boat. What are you going to do? You're not going to get this far on a trip without some bumps and bruises. I'll just fix it when I get back to Florida. Take a couple hours and a little bit of epoxy resin and some paint and we'll be done. So anyway, we're going to go explore. Join us. We say goodbye to Mark and Joe at this port, sort of. They had a couple of days before their flight and booked a hotel at the beach. And two new crew members arrived. My daughter, Devin, and her boyfriend, Albert. We lost another crew member. Jerry had to fly back to the States. Fortunately, his wife, Chris, was able to stay on board for a couple more weeks. <laughs> Bye, Jerry. Bye. Thanks for everything. Oh, thank you, engineer. Love you. Love it. Thanks, man. We'll see you back in Florida, yeah. all right? Yep. If you need anything else, let me yeah. know. Sure. Right. If you missed the plane. Yep. Yeah, yeah, you know where to go. Do you want to go in the stall market? We are here at the straw market in Georgetown, and I think I was con because Lynn said we're going to go to the market, and I thought we were going to the supermarket where I could get something nice and cold to drink and maybe some milk and things like that, and we ended up here at the straw market where we bought straw and towels and coffee cups and i um, not sure what else, some kind of sticker thing that Devin got, and well, anyway, we're on our way now to a restaurant. I think it's called Shirley's Fish Fry. And uh, we're going to meet uh, Joe and Mark for dinner. So, Because they haven't left town yet. Yes, they haven't left town. They left our boat and made room for Devin and Albert, but they got a hotel room uh, here in town. For a romantic time. Okay, for a romantic time, according to Lynn. Um, but So we're going to go meet them. Uh, as soon as we can pull Chris out of the straw market, she's making a home here. So. Okay. Oh, there she comes. We decided to walk the half mile to Shirley's. Unfortunately, the restaurant was closed. However, the hotel had a beach bar and a restaurant as well. I'm holding on to something better than anything I've ever known. We live in seasons like the weather. But one thing does it have hours? Closed Tuesday. Alright, so I just did a quick repair on some gouges on the side of the tender. We don't know how they happened. It wasn't from us. I didn't hit anything. Somebody must have hit me when we were at a restaurant or something. They were small, like smaller than a pinky. 
Um, and I kind of cleaned them out with a screwdriver and some uh, sandpaper and uh, grinded them a little bit. And I, I, I repaired it with this uh, Marine Tex. It's basically a, a epoxy that hardened. It's pretty thickened and uh, it's white. It's good for small, quick repairs. I don't really consider what I did permanent. I think sometime when I get back to our home port, I'm going to need to pull the tender off, put it on land, and do a, you know, almost the whole side of the boat just kind of go over.